Hi, this is Terry Cootie with Deep Sea Foundation, and I am visiting San Antonio this week, and I can stop by to see Dr. Manas Krasopolo from PRMA. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thanks. Good. How are you? I'm good. It's really good to be back and knock out some more videos with you. So I have a question about some wounds, because it gets brought up a lot, and we have questions about it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about wounds, uh, when patients come in with certain medical comorbidities, for example, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but a woman said that she had a V, factor V, is it Leiden? Mm -hmm. Factor five Leiden. Oh, okay, factor five Leiden. Yeah. Um, if they, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's more of a clotting problem. Exactly. Rather than a wound healing problem. So factor five Leiden increases your risk of uh, blood clots forming. Mm -hmm. So for microsurgical procedures, so the tissue transplantations we do where we disconnect tissue from one part of the body, transplant it to the chest and mm -hmm. reconstruct it mm -hmm. by connecting blood vessels. Uh, it, when a patient has a problem like factor V Leiden, it increases the risk of a clot where we connect the vessels at the anastomosis. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really impact wound healing. Okay, um, so, but but this is good information because yeah. it's certainly something they need to report on their... Oh, yeah, need for to sure. talk to it's, this. It's, it's very underreported. Factor ah, Leiden and okay. increases your risk of flap failure, so mm -hmm. things not working out. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely there are definitely things that we do in, when we know a patient has Factor Five Leiden to decrease the risk of complication. So for some surgeons, Factor Five Leiden is a contraindication to microsurgery, mm -hmm. and, but I think that most microsurgeons are, are okay doing it as long mm -hmm. as they know ahead of time and we can plan for it using blood thinners with Lovenox, that kind of stuff. Okay. For, for, for wound healing issues, uh, it's really other uh, health conditions like diabetes mm -hmm. in particular. Right. Um, patients who don't have a favorable body mass index, mm -hmm. um, so that increases your wound healing problems. Smokers, of course, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the, the worst trifecta is a smoker who's overweight and who's diabetic. Right. Um, even healthy folks who don't have comorbidities can have wound healing problems. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's because uh, we haven't recognized that the uh, that they're not eating well enough. And okay. The nutrition isn't what it needs to be. So nutrition has to be really tuned up mm -hmm. before and after major surgery. Okay. And we check uh, protein levels and, and other things to make sure that that's all tuned up. Mm -hmm. uh, How, is there a percentage of women that have? I mean, the question was asked, but to me it's kind of dependent, I think, on the success rate of the surgeon in my mind, but maybe not. Is there a percentage of women that have? Yeah, wound issues it varies a lot women or men that have breast yeah, reconstruction I mean, so there's always a risk yeah. even in someone who's completely healthy mm -hmm. um, with a phenomenal surgeon so the risk is never zero mm -hmm. i would say the risk ranges between five percent and you know 40 percent yeah um there are some papers out there that you know people who have a lot of comorbidities you mm -hmm. can have uh, a risk of wound healing issues over 50 percent Mm. Right, and it, it also it's also very important to define what a wound means. Right, so if you include some you know superficial scabbing that just leaves you with a slightly ugly scar, right, then obviously the risk of those if you include those the number is very very high. Mm -hmm. If you if you say no no I'm not talking about that superficial stuff just the stuff that I'm going to need some a major intervention, mm -hmm. like a wound vac or prolonged dressing changes or going back to surgery. Patients who have major wound healing issues like that are very few, thankfully. Yeah. Especially if you're tuning up the patient ahead of time uh, to make them as fit and healthy as possible for surgery. And I'm smiling a little bit because um, I have to say I think when you're a patient and you get any kind of wound, there's a risk analysis for patients. <laughs> Sometimes gets skewed with our concerns. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A wound after any surgery, 
a small wound might be a large wound to a patient. Do you know what I'm saying? Perception so, is everything. Yes. Thank you. That's exactly what. So last question, and then we'll wrap this one up. Um, how far out normally, you know, the question was asked, how far out do wounds happen? Is, is there like a time frame? Because mm-hmm. someone might be rolling along, everything looks great, boom. Yeah, most wounds happen during the initial healing period. Which uh, is? Uh, which is the first couple of weeks. Okay. Um, it, it, further, you know, beyond that, it becomes less likely. Okay. Um, if things aren't going to heal because of the risk factors we mentioned, then uh, by a couple of weeks, you, 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 you see the signs of it. Beyond that, uh, you can develop really small wounds if the patient isn't tolerating a suture or if there's a superficial suture or a mm-hmm. suture that isn't being absorbed. Um, you can get a what's called a superficial suture abscess or mm-hmm. something like that. Um, with a tissue-based reconstruction, um, once you're beyond the initial healing process, you're done. Ladies who tend to have a higher risk of problems later, mm-hmm. even after they've apparently healed and it's been a long time, uh, are implant patients. So the typical scenario is a lady who's been reconstructed with a, with an implant-based reconstruction, um, or tissue expander, or who, or who has the final implant put in, especially if they've had previous radiation. Mm-hmm. So those oh, yeah. ladies sometimes will develop a late kind of wound. Um, but uh, for most people, it's it's early on. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Cheers. All right.